flower like we grow from seed to finished product to edible crop so it comes in as a seed and then with most plants we would like to uh, start with germination so germination happens here in the facility then after the germination it goes to our nursery and then in our nursery the plant matures under the right conditions um, to become strong enough big enough to be transplanted so once it's from the nursery it goes to our gutter system We are not farmers, we are an ag tech company. So we have developed a solution for producing food in a hyper-local sense in supermarkets and restaurants and grocery stores. And we are doing it differently from the other ones because we also produce the food all the way from a seed to a fully ground, grown plant inside the supermarket itself. Food in general travels too much. I mean, we import a lot of food from different places and on average it's 4,000 kilometers that food flies or travels or takes train to your plate. And this is an answer to that because we want this produce that needs to be consumed fresh and leafy greens, salads, herbs and spices are those products that you actually want them to be super fresh. So I think definitely vertical farming with the potential that it shows is going to be a big part of feeding the planet in the future. And I think it's going to be more and more products actually that are going to be produced in farms like ours. It's a safety for us to have it. You know, we know exactly how much we can produce every day. There's no ups and downs. There's no uh, little to no, uh, you know, impact on the outside world on our production. To be honest, I just looked at the prices and this one was pretty cheap uh, since all prices are really high right now. So that was my choice. Um, yeah. It's just a different setup because you don't really transport this and in two weeks it's harvest. So you know, like continuous. Yeah, well, if food is grown outside, it's subjected to different uh, sources of contamination like soils, uh, animals, uh, different uh, atmospheric uh, pollution, for example. And if you grow them inside, you can control those factors and have a a product that is as high a quality from a yeah, microbial point of view and from a food, food safety point of view. We use the heat that is uh, already generated by the building here, which is a supermarket to heat our facility. Uh, we also use the, the basically the CO2 that people breathe out to, to, to concentrate and capture and release it here so we can raise our, our CO2 levels, which means that the photosynthesis of a plant can increase, right? Because there's more CO2 available. This is most of the time a lacking 
part of it. Um, we also capture all the, the water that is evaporated here. Uh, we capture this and then we condensate it back to our water tank. For example, for lighting uh, and even the like cooling system, cooling and like airflow that uses a lot of electricity. So it depends on where they are. So if you're in a country like, uh, so I'm in Sweden, uh, Sweden has a low carbon energy system. So the vertical farms tend to be quite a lot better here than they are in other parts of the world. Uh, so then if you put it somewhere where there's a, like a dirty energy system, then it's not going to be as good. Yeah, do it again once more. For food security, there is no single silver bullet. That is something that we need to accept. And there are different types of food that we need to eat in order to survive. I think vertical farming has the potential to be a big part of the, the future of food. But also if you're talking about like taking us to the other planets, growing food on Mars, then you could talk about like vertical farming would be the only solution because many talk about like vertical farming as something that popped up as a concept i think it's an spin-off of our travel all the way to moon so it's very futuristic in that sense oh,